the 27th chapter, Acts chapter 27, and we're looking at the topic, Abiding with the Ship. Abiding with the Ship. We know that Luke, the beloved physician, as he is called in the book of Colossians, recorded the book of Acts and the events that occurred there. Luke was an inspired historian. That is, the Spirit guided him in what he wrote as the Spirit guided all of the Bible writers. And so everything that was recorded in the book of Acts was 100% accurate. I'd like to take a portion here of Acts 27 where Paul was aboard the ship on his voyage to Rome as a prisoner and to look at this and to draw some practical lessons out of it for us today. I'd like to begin by reading here in Acts 27, verse number 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and do have gained this harm and lost. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. And when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the so soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take me, saying, this day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, Two hundred, three score, and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten it up, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. Now, as we consider Paul's tumultuous voyage to Rome, there are many great lessons here. We notice here toward the end of our reading that he gave thanks before they eat in the presence of them all. He gave thanks to God, and of course. That is an example that we should all follow. Paul said, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. But now let's consider Paul's concern for those on board. The Apostle Paul had a love for all people and all souls. We know that he loved the souls in the Lord's church. Certainly he did very much. And all we have to do is read any of his epistles to see that or read his words and actions in the book of Acts. But also he had a great concern for those who were not in Christ. He was concerned for others, even for lost people. Like the Lord himself, we read of the Lord, he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 and verse number 10. We know that Jesus had a concern for lost people in Luke and express this in Luke chapter 9 and verse 55 and 56. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you're of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. 
Here, the Apostle Paul in Acts 27 displayed the same attitude. He was concerned about those on board the ship with him. As we read verses 22 to 24, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. This indicates, and God knew, that Paul was concerned about the others who were aboard the ship, along with himself. Not only those in Christ, but those who were lost and in sin. The Bible teaches us that we are to do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Galatians 6 and verse 10. Another thing that we learn here in this reading is that Paul belonged to God. He said, whose I am and whom I serve. That certainly is a description of any Christian that we belong to God, that we serve God. That's what makes us Christians. Paul said, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. The church of God, which you have purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, verse 28. And hence, we have been bought with the price, the blood of Christ. We belong to God. God speaks to us today, not in a vision or miraculously, as He did Paul here, but He does speak to us through the Bible. This is God's means of communication with us today through the Holy Scriptures. We are to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians 6, 17. Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, verse 4. And so although we do not hear miraculously God's voice, or God speaking or appearing to us in some miraculous vision, nevertheless, we do have every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God toward us today through the Holy Scriptures. But now secondly, we consider that Paul believed God. He said that I believe God in verse number 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. What God had told him about there not being the loss of any man's life, Paul believed that. But look at that principle and apply it to us today. Paul not only believed this, but he believed everything that the Lord said in His Word. And so should we. We should believe everything that the Lord says concerning the plan of salvation and how to become a Christian. We should believe everything that the Lord says regarding how to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We should believe everything that the Lord says in regard to how to live a Christian life and how to make it to heaven. Indeed, we need to have the Pauline attitude that I believe God. Do we? Paul said that he had not shunned or shrink back from declaring the whole counsel of God. Acts 20, verse 27. Jesus, Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even to the end of the world. Amen. We are to believe every word of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 116, verse number 10, I believe, therefore have I spoken, I was greatly afflicted. When we turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 5 and 6, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Every word of God, my friends, should be precious to us. Paul said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. But number three this evening, we read again verses 29 to 32. I want to reread re -read that, although we read it a while ago. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea, that is a smaller boat that was attached to the ship, when they had let down the boat in the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, 
You cannot be saved. The centurion, of course, was in charge. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Look at this here. The shipmen, that is the workers on the ship, were about to flee. They were about to get into that smaller boat and flee away from the ship. But Paul warned that except these, that is the shipmen, abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. If those shipmen had not stayed in that ship and taken care of it and done all those duties that they were expert and professionals in, then those aboard the ship would not have been saved from, of course, destruction. Paul warned this. Without the shipmen, all would be lost. They were needed. So they cut off the ropes and let the smaller boat fall off, and this presented, prevented their escape. Now let's look at some lessons and application. Perhaps we have heard before, in time past, the church referred to as the old ship of Zion. This has been a description of the church through the years. The old ship of Zion, the Lord's church, has sailed through many troubled waters and many bloody seas. Go to the book of Revelation, for example, in chapter 17, verse 6. John said, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The woman representing those of that power that persecuted the Lord's church and shed the blood of the Lord's people. And then, of course, in chapter 20, verse 4, John refers to those who had been beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the worship of God and for the word of God and which had not worship the beast. So the church has gone through severe persecution and had other troubles through the centuries. And at times the old ship of Zion may seem to be ready to sink and to perish forever, but it never has. God predicted through Daniel the prophet in the days of these kings, that is the days of the Roman rulers when the church was established, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Daniel 2.44. And certainly the church was established during that period of history, during the Roman Empire. And the church is that kingdom which shall never be destroyed. In Hebrews 12.28, the church is referred to as a kingdom which cannot be moved. The Lord referred to the church that He would build as one against which the gates of hell or Hades would not prevail. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All the forces of evil thrust against the body of Christ, the church, the old ship of Zion, as it were, could not sink that mighty ship. Many have fled the ship, as we know. God will not force people to stay with the church, stay with the truth. That is up to us to do that. We have an example in Demas in 2 Timothy 4, verse 10. Paul said, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, Paul referred to those who make shipwreck or who made shipwreck of the faith. Let me read verse 18 to 20. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to bless me. Even the great apostle Paul realized that he needed to stay on guard and keep his body under control, lest he himself be a castaway. He said, But I keep under my body and bring it to subjection, lest by, my, by any means that I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul said here to the centurion, here in Acts chapter 27, he said that except these abide with the ship, they cannot be saved. 
except these abide in the ship that cannot be saved. I think about that principle today. We must abide with the ship of the Lord, the old ship of Zion, the church, or we will be lost. We have to stay faithful to the Lord and to the church. Regardless of the fact that many have gone astray and turned away from the truth. Even preachers, even elders, and many brethren that we never would have dreamed of done such a thing. They have. They've turned away. We cannot afford to commit mutiny on the bounty and forsake the ship. We must be faithful to the Lord. The Apostle Peter sends forth this very severe warning regarding those who turn away from the truth. In 2 Peter 2, 20-22, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed, and her wallowing in the mire. Then, of course, here the words of Paul to the centurion were that the shipman must abide in the ship, or ye cannot be saved. That is, others on the ship cannot be saved if these shipmen do not abide in the ship. Now think about that today as it applies to us. These shipmen were needed to stay on the ship to save the lives of many other people. There were 276 souls on that ship, nearly 300. Think about the many souls that may be lost if any of us forsake the ship. Those souls that are looking to us as an example and an influence. Those souls among our friends and family that are influenced by us to do what's right. Those souls to whom we have taught the truth and lived the truth before. Consider that souls may be lost if we forsake the old ship of Zion, the church. Also consider that we, like those shipmen aboard that ship where Paul was, we're needed to stay aboard in order to save the lives of others. We are needed in the Lord's church to work and to labor and to live for Christ and do the Lord's work that we might restore the fallen, that we might convert the lost to Christ. That if we forsake the ship, there are many souls at stake indeed. The wise man said, He that win his souls is wise and the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Proverbs 11, verse 30. In James 5, verse 19 and 20, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth in one, convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Think about what happens when a member of the church goes back into sin or becomes unfaithful and the stumbling block and offense that it cause, that causes souls to be lost. Jesus warned against this in Matthew 18, 6. But whoso shall offend, that is, cause to stumble, one of these little ones which believe in me, referring to his followers, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. What a horrible warning, but yet a much needed one that is. We ourselves must abide with the old ship of Zion or we will be lost. Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, verse 62. They cut off the ropes so that smaller boat would fall off. That, of course, removed the opportunity for these shipmen to leave the ship when they cut off the ropes and that boat fell off. We need to cut off those things that will encourage our departure from the Lord. We need to lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and to run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. There are those in the church who need to cut off some of their companions, who need to cut off some of their kinds of entertainment and communications that are evil, that corrupt good manners or good morals. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. There are those who need to sever certain things from their lives that are causing them to be weak and to stumble. Jesus said, If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life with one hand than having two hands to be cast into hellfire, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt than having two feet to be cast into hell fire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And so, as he said here, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell. And we know here that what Jesus said is exactly right. We need to cut off anything that will cause our souls to be destroyed. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Paul said to abstain from, every, from all appearance that is every form of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 and let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, and cleave to that which is good. Romans 12 and verse 9. If we stay with the old ship of Zion and the captain of our salvation, as Jesus Christ is called in Hebrews 2.10, then he will see us safely to the shores of heaven. He will see us safely home. It reminds us of the song, Abide with me, fast falls the even time. As the darkness deepens, O Lord, with me, abide. As we close this evening, my friends, let us be faithful and diligent shipmen on the Lord's old ship of Zion, the church, seeking to save the church and all who are in it. <coughs> the church which Christ loved and gave himself for, Ephesians 5, 25. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, as Paul taught there in Ephesians chapter 5. One way that we do this is to be a proper example to the believers, as Paul taught in 1 Timothy 4:12 and to warn the unruly, to comfort uh, the feeble-minded, to support the weak, and be patient toward all men, 1 Thessalonians 5.14, and to edify or to build up one another, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. And Hebrews 3.12, Take ye, brethren, lest there be an evil heart, an evil heart of un, in you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews 3, verse 12 and 13. Let us be steadfast workers who seek to rescue the perishing, those who are drowning in sin, and bring them aboard that they might be saved. Like those Jews who were lost in sin on Pentecost, to whom Peter commanded, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2.38 Verse 41, That they that gladly received His word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. We see that when they obeyed the gospel, they were saved, and the Lord added them to His body, the church. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved, or such as were being saved, verse 47. 
Let us rescue those who have drifted from Christ and fallen away. As the book of Hebrews teaches of those who have drawn back in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 38 and 39. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, that is, unto perishing, to being lost, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. The lesson is yours this evening, my friends. If we have any here need to come back to the Lord's church to be faithful, we encourage you to repent and pray God's forgiveness as Peter commanded Simon in Acts 8.22. Or if there be any who need to put on Christ in baptism, Galatians 3.27, this is what we may do by hearing and believing the gospel, Romans 10.17, by repentance, Acts 2.38, confessing Jesus Christ, Son of God, Acts 8.37, and then be buried with Christ in baptism, and rise to walk in the newness of life, Romans 6.4. While together we stand and we sing.